think that the Scholars Program is reflective very much of Whittier's history. The Scholars Program has had, I think, sort of eras. In 1976, with some other people, we looked at the current individualized program for all of the college and realized that for some people it was working well, but it didn't work well for everybody. And so we thought we needed to revise what we had, thinking that not all students were equally excited or capable of designing their own education, nor all faculty willing to spend the enormous amount of time it required. And so uh, we proposed that rather than having the college have entirely individualized education, part of it be indi individualized and part of it be a more traditional but somehow exciting curriculum for the remainder of the students. The main thing about the Whittier Scholars Program, and I think this is something that was true from the time it was created, is the idea that it was not a way for students to get out of requirements, but it was a way for students to really take responsibility for their own education. This was a time in American education when there were a few other individualized programs in the country. A lot of the people who've been good in the Scholars Program have been uh, kind of deliberately a little bit outside, a little bit rebellious, a little bit uh, you know, wanting to know stuff, but really wanting it their way. And so we began to attract a certain kind of adventure student. We attracted a lot of pre-meds. We attracted art students. We attracted uh, people who wanted to go into international affairs, law. We do know that the Whittier Scholars students tended to be overachievers. I would see some of the most robust majors, 48, 56 units. These were students who were combining three different interdisciplinary fields and really making sense out of those um, interests. We've had students who've done art projects of various kinds, who've written novels, um, short stories. One, one student um, took Catcher in the Rye and developed it into a screenplay, something that had never been done before because he was really, really interested, not only in the topic, but why had it never been made into a movie and what would it take to make it into a screenplay. I can think of one student who was working on his senior project uh, and found that the thing he needed to do had, had failed. He just couldn't do it. And he said, I've, I've failed, I can't do this, I'm not going to graduate. And I said to him, wait a second, you can write about your failure, can't you? I mean, that's part, you know, that's, that's an intellectual project in and of itself. The thing you couldn't do becomes what your project is. Why was that? What failed? Why, why didn't you do it? You know, he didn't know where he was going to end up. He certainly didn't think he was, his senior project was going to be great. It was great. The failure was exactly what he needed to have happen in some ways. One student did her senior project, um, Picasso. And I don't really like Picasso's work, but I was her second reader. And I must say that I have a much better understanding of Picasso. So, it, it was worthwhile. I was chatting with one of my students and he was telling me about his path in college. He started out in college thinking that, of all things, he hated math. And then he realized that he really loved computer science, which requires a lot of math. So then he was going to be a computer science major. And then he discovered he really liked physics. So that was really awesome. But that's too many classes to graduate. You can't do the, all the majors all at the same time. So then he joined the Whittier Scholars Program as a junior, later than most students do. He already had a lot of classes under his belt, but he couldn't figure out how they all fit together. So in Whittier Scholars, as we were chatting, we realized that what he really wants to do is he wants to apply his skills to help people in the world. So for his senior project, he ended up making, this still blows my mind, an arm. He made a prosthetic arm. Scholar students, when they're designing their self-designed majors, I, I often um, use the metaphor of a three-legged stool. And you can't sit on a three-legged stool if one of the legs is weak. And so you have to have these disciplines really in conversation with one another. Does it mean that you're, you're an expert in each and every discipline? No. But 
those disciplines can feed off of one another in ways that create a whole new approach to expertise. You really required intense advising to make it really sound. Uh, and that, that's what we did. The most important thing was the faculty as a whole being on board. I think that's been crucial to the Scholars Program, that the more faculty who are involved, the better the program is. For me, the magic of the program happened in the seminar room. When the student was there with the director or the associate director, the advisor, the sponsor, and a member of council. And together, bringing all of our knowledge and expertise into the room, which in some cases went over a century of years of experience. And the benefits to the students is truly amazing. I remember being in on one design and he said he really didn't know whether next year he should give himself sort of a leg up on medical school by taking anatomy and physiology or whether he should take a course I was going to teach in a 19th century European novel. The student's advisor, Warren Hansen in the biology department, Warren said take the, uh, the European novel class. You're going to have plenty of time to learn anatomy and physiology in uh, medical school. This will be your last chance to know that. And the young man did take the course. It did very well at it. Went on to medical school. So he wanted, he wanted to be sure that I got the message that he was so glad that he did because he'd met too many people in uh, medical school that didn't know anything except anatomy and physiology. He was intent upon becoming not just a doctor, but a cultivated human being, and I'm sure he's a much better doctor for that. Our alumni are pretty amazing. Um, I was looking at some data, and in one five-year period, more than 50% of alumni from Whittier Scholars secured an advanced degree within five years of graduating. We have folks who've done medical, you know, PhDs, MDs, JDs, EEDs, I mean, you name it, they've gone on. What we need to remember is that all things change. The biggest change, I think, came when Joyce Cotham became director. It's not the same scholars program, and that's exactly how it should be. One of the things we did when we did the program review when I first started was we looked at those um, old courses. What are human beings? What is reality? And we concluded that that was really appropriate for the ideas upon which the program was founded, but that students were different and the needs were different. My favorite class again that we don't have anymore is actually what is reality. I thought uh, a lot of my colleagues thought that was the hardest class to teach. I love that class. In fact, the best student evaluation I ever got was from that class. He said, this class really messed me up, which was a compliment. This is code for, this was a class that made me do some thinking. I still don't know what reality is. There were always times when you would see the what? <laughs> or you would have it yourself. So I see this as a moment of real transformation for Whittier College and for Whittier Scholars as well. Our entire curriculum is being rethought and reimagined by the faculty as a whole. So every Whittier Scholar starting this year has a website of their own. It is over the four years of their education, they'll collect different um, aspects of their education and display them on their own website. They'll sort of curate their own education. One of the things we've been thinking is that the very flexibility of the process of designing your education requires, asks of students, the kinds of knowledge about how college works that students who are new to college just may not have. And so we're trying to think, how do we make college more obvious, <laughs> not easier, but more apparent. There's a word that's circulating a lot these days among faculty, and that is the invisible curriculum. And this is a word, this is a way to try to get it. What are all those things that, that some people have when they enter college and other people don't? 
And so what we're thinking is, in the Whittier Scholars Program, we can make those invisible skills more apparent, and we can actually teach them at the very beginning of the program. So we are thinking about reimagining the first year class of the program, but we're thinking about reimagining it around what we call scholars' skills. What kind of skills does it take to be a successful scholar student? And by scholar student, a successful self-creative person in the world.